Welcome to the podcast that we call the Jesus book because the Bible is a book about Jesus and we are taking a look at certain parts of it. We started with the Gospel of Mark and it's a good place to begin if you have never read the Bible because of its brevity. It's 16 chapters. It's a good book to read to get uh, started. And of course, it's about Jesus. So it's definitely worth your time. And then we said that the second book that I would recommend reading after Mark is the Gospel of John because of its great, great emphasis on the person of Christ and who he is and what we are to believe about our Lord and Savior. And we pointed out that the book starts with affirming that Jesus is God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then down in verse 14, he tells you who the Word is, who that's talking about. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So that's talking about Jesus. And he was in the beginning with God, the Father, and he was God and is God, the Son. And that's one of the things that John is writing to tell you. And we didn't get into a whole lot of John's evidences for the, uh, the deity of Jesus. So we'll look at some of those now. For example, in John chapter 5, they were going to kill Jesus because he not only broke their Sabbath traditions, but he also called God his Father, making himself equal with God. They understood exactly what the Son of God, what that title meant and his claim to it. Over in John chapter 8, you've got an even more bold example because there he tells them that he is the I am of old. You remember in Exodus chapter 3 when Moses asked, who shall I say has sent me to Pharaoh? God said, tell him, I am has sent you. And so Jesus in John 8 said, before Abraham was, I am. In other words, before Abraham was born, I am, always in the present tense, indicating his eternality, the fact that he's always existed, which is what John started with in the beginning. He was in the beginning with God. Then they took up stones and wanted to kill him there. And there are other examples as well. In John chapter 10, they were going to stone him and he said, which good work are you stoning me for? In other words, what have I done? I've done nothing but good works. And they said, we're not stoning you for a good work, but we're stoning you because you, a mere man, make yourself God. So his claim to be God is one of the main emphasis of the Gospel of John. Now there are so many things that are found in this rich book about uh, statements that Jesus made about himself. For example, John chapter 6, he said, I am the bread of life. John chapter 8, he said, I am the light of the world. And perhaps the greatest I am statement is found in John chapter 11 when he goes to raise his friend Lazarus from the dead. And when he gets there, the sisters of Lazarus are very upset and distraught. And he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, he will live. So there's that idea of believing in him. Why? Because he is the resurrection and the life. He is the one to believe in. He is the one worth believing in. And so that's the emphasis you see throughout the wonderful gospel of John is on who Jesus is and what Jesus said and what Jesus said specifically about himself. And as you're reading it, notice the things that he said about himself and notice the things that he said about believing in him, believing in him as the son of God. I told you last time, and it's uh, worth repeating, that in John chapter 20, in the last verse, he tells you why he wrote his book. Many other signs did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in his book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life through his name. That's what we're supposed to believe, that Jesus is the Christ. And this one and only unique Son of God comes into the world so that we can be saved if we believe in him and believe enough to follow him. He's not just talking about giving uh, mental assent to the fact that he's the Son of God, but believing in him in the sense of trusting him as your Savior and Lord. And that's the purpose that Jesus came into the world for was so that those who would do that will have eternal life. And so a lot is said in here about eternal life. Note that as you go through, a lot is said about believing. And then you have just outstanding examples of who he is. Like for example, John 13, Jesus washes the feet of the disciples. John is the only one that records that incident. And as the disciples were arguing about who is the greatest among them, Jesus gets down on his knees and washes their feet in order to teach them what his kingdom and what following him is about. It's about service 
And it's not about washing feet. That was what they did in that culture. But he said, what I'm doing, you do not understand. Well, they understood that he was washing feet, but they didn't understand the point of it. And that is that he was showing them that to be great, you must live a life of service. And then we come to John 14, where he talks about the place he's going to prepare for us and how he is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14 and verse six, one of the great passages in all the Bible, Jesus saying, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then Philip says, show us the Father. And Jesus says, have I been with you so long that you have not known me? If you've seen me, if you know me, you know the Father because they are one in ways that we cannot understand. But he was in the beginning with God and he was God and yet they are one so that if you know Jesus, you know God the Father. John 15 is an excellent chapter to talk about your personal relationship with him as he talks about how he is the vine and we are the branches and our job is to abide in him to have fellowship with him, to have intimacy with him, to stay with him, to have that personal relationship with him. And if we do, if we abide in him and he abides in us, talking about a relationship, a relationship of faith, a relationship of obedience, then we will bear much fruit. So knowing Christ in these ways that he is describing, he's using simple metaphors to describe the way that he wants us to see him, the bread of life, the vine and the branches, in John chapter 10, he calls himself the good shepherd. All these are things that point to who he is and what he does for us. In the 17th chapter of John, you have the great prayer that he prayed on behalf of himself, on behalf of his disciples, and on behalf of all believers. And it's called a lot of times his high priestly prayer because he is interceding for others. But it's a beautiful insight into the heart of God. If you'll read that and meditate on the prayer that he prayed, you will be blessed by it. And then we come to John chapter 18, where he is betrayed and arrested and sentenced to death. And the rest of the book will tell us about his death, his burial and his triumphant resurrection from the grave. And then he'll appear in the last chapter to his disciples after he has been raised from the dead. And he will meet with them there on the shore and he will talk to Simon Peter and give him a chance to affirm his love for him three times. Simon Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And Peter will say yes, because he did love him, but he let him down. And his love for Jesus was not as strong as it needed to be. And it was not as strong as it was going to be in the future. Peter would wind up giving his life for the Savior. And Jesus told him that he was gonna do that. But notice the compassion and the forgiveness that we see in the heart of Jesus. Even though Peter had denied him and done this terrible thing three times, Jesus forgives him and receives him and sends him out to preach the gospel just as he did all of the apostles. Now, one part of this wonderful book to consider is the part about the man known as Doubting Thomas. And that's not really fair because all of the disciples doubted. Thomas just wasn't there when Jesus appeared. And when he did get there and the others told him that they had seen the Lord after his resurrection, he said, I will not believe unless I see it for myself. So Jesus appears again and Thomas sees him and worships him my Lord and my God, when he realizes that Jesus is truly raised from the dead. And so they're still learning about Christ and who he is. Even after the resurrection, they're still struggling with putting it all together. And you and I struggle at times with knowing what we need to know about Jesus, but we're growing just like the apostles if we're reading his word and meditating on it and meditating on him. And Jesus told Thomas, you have believed because you have seen, but blessed are those who have not seen yet have believed. That's right there in John chapter 20 and verse 29. God is interested in people who will believe in his word. Not people who have the attitude of, I've got to see it to believe it, but those who say, God, you said it, your word teaches it, and that settles it for me, I believe. So it is the gospel of believing in Jesus, the son of God, and it is so simple when you read it from the standpoint of just learning about Christ, not getting bogged down in deep theological studies, but just reading it devotionally to know Christ, to know him better, to know him more fully as far as what he wants from you and what he wants from me, and looking at it all from the standpoint of that personal relationship. We see a man named Jesus who came into this world and was willing to go to any lengths necessary 
to have a relationship with you and with me so that we could be saved. And when the dark and difficult days come, remember Jesus is with you and he's expecting you to believe in him and to trust him. And when things are good, he's expecting you to believe in him and to trust in him. And most importantly, he wants you to come to him for salvation. There is no reason to be lost. When you look at this wonderful man named Jesus who came into the world in order to save us. So the Gospel of John, well worth our time to read and to study it. This is the Word of God. And this is the Word of God about the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And it is lengthy. You'll have to take some time to get through it, but it'll be worth it because of what it will do for your personal relationship with Jesus and your personal understanding of who He is and what He is all about. Nothing makes that clearer than the Gospel of John. So we encourage you in your reading and in your study to read the Bible, to know Jesus. That's the only reason the Bible was given was so that we would know Jesus Christ. So read it for that purpose. And the Gospel of John is a wonderful place to do that. And again, that is why it is the Jesus book, the book about Christ. All throughout the entire Bible, it is about Jesus. Thank you for joining us on the Jesus Book Podcast. And we will see you next time, Lord willing.